Hey, how are you doing and welcome to the Trading Mail Show. Today we have come to at the Retirement Benefits Authority and we're here to talk to the CEO, Mr. Nzomo Motuko. And he's going to be telling us what is the future holding, especially for the pensioners, and are there good things to look ahead for. Come with me. Mr. Nzomo Motuku is the Chief Executive Officer of the Retirement Benefits Authority and an ex officio member of the Board of Directors. Prior to his appointment, Mr. Mutuku had been seconded to the National Treasury and planning as a senior advisor, financial sector and acting director, financial and sectoral affairs department. Previously, he was the chief manager, research and development at RBA and has worked with RBA since 2000, where he joined from the Central Bank of Kenya. Mr. Mutuku has a wealth of experience in the operations and activities of the financial sector. He has undertaken training in pensions and financial markets in various countries including the UK, Canada and USA at Harvard University and Wharton Business School. He holds a Master's of Arts degree in Economics as well as a First Class Honours Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics and is a Fellow of the Economics Society of Kenya. Thank you so much sir, for joining us and welcome to the Trading Bell. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Uh, well, when people hear about Retirement Benefits Authority, some question, what is this authority about? And maybe I would just want to start on that note of, could you briefly walk us through the authority's mandate to Kenyans? Thank you. Yeah. Um, Retirement Benefits Authority, RBA, mm -hmm. um, is a regulatory body yeah. created by an act of parliament, mm -hmm. the Retirement Benefits Act, yeah. uh, which actually passed in 1997 and commenced in 2000. Yeah. So our mandate is, is, is pretty straightforward. We have five things that we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, one, we regulate and supervise pension schemes in Kenya. Yeah. And we have over a thousand schemes that we regulate. Wow. Uh, two, mm -hmm. we protect the interests of the members of those schemes. Mm -hmm. So members are just ordinary Kenyans who are saving for retirement in schemes. Mm -hmm. And we have a mandate to protect um, their interests. Wow. Three, um, mm -hmm. we are there to develop the industry, mm -hmm. make sure more people save for retirement, mm -hmm. try to grow uh, the numbers, the assets, of, of, of the pension industry. Mm -hmm. um, four, um, very important, we also advise government on policy issues yes. to do with, um, uh, with, with retirement in okay. the industry. So we do a lot of research mm -hmm. and we send memorandums to government on policy changes that we think would be good for, for our industry. And the last one is, yeah. of course, like any other government agencies, mm -hmm. we support government in their, in their policies. So mm -hmm. with Vision 2030 is a big four agenda and so on. Uh, we support the government. So that's what RB is all about. Okay, quite a handful and you know, <laughs> matters of retirement are very close to people's hearts. And let me jump straight to how the organization has been doing. Uh, you recently celebrated your 20th anniversary. My question to you would be, what are some of the significant milestones achieved so far in RBA? I think it's been a great 20 years uh, mm -hmm. for RBA and for the industry. Yes. Um, we have seen the assets grow from less than 100 billion uh, shillings. Mm -hmm to the current 1.48 trillion that we have as a June 2021. So wow. That's huge growth. Mm -hmm. We have seen the people covered in, in pension arrangements grow from around 12% of the labor force mm -hmm. to 22% uh, currently yeah. um, covered. Mm -hmm. um, over the 20 years also, we have developed a very um, robust pension industry in Kenya yeah. um, with a lot of uh, variety of products. Mm -hmm. For example, we have um, umbrella schemes, we mm. have individual personal plans which are open to anybody. Yes. Um, we have what we call uh, provident funds, mm -hmm. pension schemes, defined benefit, defined contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, and these schemes are also served by a strong cadre of professionals. Mm -hmm. So we have custodians mm -hmm. uh, who are banks who hold the assets of schemes, mm -hmm. who we register. Um, we have fund managers who yeah. are professional investors mm -hmm. um, who do the investment, who we also register. Mm -hmm. uh, we have administrators mm -hmm. um, who do the day-to-day -day running of the scheme. Okay. Uh, actuaries, I think when, Ke when RBA came, we only had maybe one or two actuaries in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, now we have over 50 uh, qualified actuaries uh, in, the, in the country, mm -hmm. um, accountants, lawyers, and so on. So we have a very um, uh, robust and well-developed pension industry. Okay. And in fact, last year when Alliance did a survey of 
pension industries in Africa, mm -hmm. they ranked us number two uh, behind South Africa in terms of the development of our, of our pension industry. That's number two in Africa? Number two in Africa, correct. Wow, yes. wow. So Excellent. And I know I want to uh, a little bit dig deeper on that because you've talked about your the contribution and the pension asset growing to, you know, totaling, which you said, 1.48 trillion. What would you say is the key driver to this growth? Um, the key drivers to the growth, of course, um, are the efforts we have done in terms of getting more people on board. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have increased the coverage from 12% to 20%. So more people are saving. Yes. Uh, that will grow the assets. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, um, making sure that those assets are invested in a very uh, stable and, you know, optimal manner. Mm -hmm. uh, and once that happens, then the assets themselves will also um, grow. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the whole framework that you have put in place with the checks and balances, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the custodian, the fund yeah. manager, and so on, uh, and board of trustees, it ensures that the assets are safe, mm -hmm. uh, that you don't have leakages from the system. Mm -hmm. So with that kind of robust structure, yeah. uh, we, are, we are definitely going to see a lot of growth, and that's what we have seen over the last 20 years. Absolutely. Let me jump into your investment and, uh, you know, the asset allocation skew in the pension industry has been more towards the fixed income. Um, of course, one would really understand this based on the fact that they are sort of a safe haven and have a better appeal. But, you know, there has been concerns uh, that the trustees or the overseers of these funds might not be maybe at a level or in the capacity to assess other asset classes. I don't know what your view on that is on this. And do you see the high exposure to fixed income as a risk? Um, I don't see it as a risk. Um, mm -hmm. If you look at our asset uh, portfolio, yeah. um, we have around 44% of total assets in, um, in government fixed income securities. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have around 17% um, in equities in the, in the NSC. Yeah. Um, another maybe 16% in what we call guaranteed funds and insurance companies. Yeah. And also around 16% in, um, in, in real estate investments. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that portfolio, it's actually pretty well diversified. In fact, if you compare <laughs> with most African <laughs> countries, yeah. you find government securities is maybe 70-80% of, wow. of the total portfolio. But okay. here we are talking of only 44%. Okay. Uh, 44%. Mm -hmm. um, so I think with this diversification, um, you know, pension schemes are, are, are pretty cushioned against shocks from coming mm -hmm. from, uh, from different sites. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a little bit offshore. Um, we have emerging amounts in what we call alternative investments. Yeah. So like private equity, mm -hmm. we have come up from, you know, 500 million, I around 2.5 billion shillings, which is in private equity. Yeah. Uh, REITs, mm -hmm. we have amounts there. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we have seen, we have a pretty well um, a diversified um, 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 portfolio. So I okay. think the risks are well managed. And of course, like I mentioned, um, yes, the trustees are the ultimate uh, owners mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of the members, mm -hmm. but they use professional fund managers to do the investment. Okay. So the investment is being done by, by the fund managers who are registered by both ourselves and by the Capital Markets Authority. Of course, I would want to also dwell on that because, um, and I love the fact that you've mentioned that even, uh, you know, some of the investments at the NSC and all that, and it's commendable in terms of percentages that you're looking at. But as we go on, as you are, and we privately had a conversation about this, there are new ways that are coming up, and new investments portfolios, new asset classes as well that are coming up, and even new instruments of trade. Uh, for example, uh, I could talk about the derivatives market, but the NAC. Are you seeing yourselves as well diversifying to these levels? Uh, in fact, the question would be, what's your risk appetite in terms of really looking at these new ways of you know, investing this cash? Um, interestingly, um, this is one case where the regulator is kind of like ahead of the market. Wow. So <laughs> when you look at our investment guidelines, yeah. you know, they do allow schemes to invest in a mm -hmm. lot of these new things, yeah. though they may not necessarily be in the market yet or schemes may not necessarily have put money there. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, we allow derivatives, yeah. uh, which is a new class. Wow. Um, we allow exchange traded funds, mm -hmm. which we only have one in the market, okay. and we have some, some, some investment there. Mm -hmm. um, recently, we brought a new category for um, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, so schemes can invest in infrastructure and support the government in you know, affordable housing projects or yeah. infrastructure projects through mm -hmm. PPPs, like the ones that are coming up. Yeah. Um, so we have these already allowed in, um, in our guidelines, mm -hmm. but uh, they have not really been taken up yet because the products are not yet there. Okay. Uh, but we expect the products to come and then yeah. the schemes will be able to, to invest. Okay. Mm. 
Um, some people on the ground sometimes, um, you know, uh, are not satisfied, if I may use that word, with some of the returns they get, uh, you know, from some of the schemes they take up. I, I don't know what would be your comment on them uh, in terms of a regulatory perspective. Um, is it their patients levels that need to grow a little bit more or, you know, uh, from where you see it, what are your, some of your advice to search? I think pensions is a long-term business. Yeah. Um, people are, you know, saving for many, many years, and then they will get the money uh, much later. Mm -hmm. So one should not be worried about short-term volatility. Okay. You know, when you have a diversified portfolio like this, mm -hmm. things will move up and down. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, if you take the equity market, some yeah. years are good years, mm -hmm. uh, some years are bad years, mm -hmm. uh, or some quarters are good quarters, some quarters are bad quarters. Yeah. But one should not be bothered about that, that, that short-term volatility. I think if you look at what pension schemes have delivered to their members mm -hmm. over 10 years, yeah. um, it, it's, been a very, it's been a very good return okay. um, and well above uh, inflation. Mm -hmm. um, so I just urge members not to worry about short-term issues. Let's look at the long-term because <laughs> pensions is long-term. Mm. All right. That's some hope, definitely, and some lessons there to take home. You know, as an industry as well, definitely have not been spared from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and um, I, I would want to hear from you and how was it for you and you know some of the key lessons that you took out from it. Yes of course COVID impacted uh, pensions just like the rest of the economy mm -hmm. and other sectors. Mm -hmm. um, first we had like triple shock um, mm -hmm. which is a bit rare because even when we you know we do what we call stress testing and try to see how resilient our system is. Yes. We anticipate one shock maybe two shocks but mm -hmm. now you had three shocks mm -hmm. uh, the three shocks were one um, we had people who lost their jobs and came yes. and took their money out of the system because okay. in the Kenyan pension system yeah if you lose your job you can get an amount of the money out so actually the majority of what you have saved you can take it out um, so those who um, lost their jobs took their money out which is a good thing because you know if you have lost your job suddenly okay. uh, it's good that you have this cushion that your pension can give you mm -hmm. um, so it helped them in, in, in in that circumstance. So that was one shock, mm -hmm. uh, money leaving the system. Yeah. Uh, the second shock was on the contribution side. Mm -hmm. um, some employers mm -hmm. um, either you know, stopped business, mm -hmm. uh, sent their workers on unpaid leave, so they didn't retrench them, but they were like on unpaid leave or you know, on less pay and so on. Yeah. So this meant they were not contributing or they were contributing less than what they would normally. Definitely. Contribute. Like those who had closed, like hotels, mm -hmm. you know, they were not contributing mm -hmm. uh, to, to the pension scheme. Okay. Um, so that was another shock. And then, of course, we had a shock on the investment side because, as we have just said, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of volatility and we saw the markets uh, impacted uh, when COVID um, um, came. Absolutely. Um, so, yes, it was a difficult time, but um, I think we have now seen uh, a lot of resilience. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the period between uh, December 20. Mm -hmm. Um, let's say December 2019 yeah. and now, mm -hmm. you know, our asset base has come from you know, 1.2 something trillion to the 1.48. So yeah. we have still been able to grow. Mm -hmm. So our industry is uh, resilient uh, despite um, those shocks. And I think now we are seeing a uh, slow return to normalcy. Uh, some of the people had suspended contributions have come back and now they are making the full. Okay. Contributions. You know, we just closed on uh, how the COVID impact was and definitely an advice to people that, you know, the market can be volatile and, you know, there are unexpected things that come ar around, but we need to be more patient, as you have said. The other key question is that research uh, has it that by 2030, the number of Kenyans aged 60 years and above will rise from 1.6 million currently to about 3.4 million. You know, uh, so in ensuring that this demographic doesn't become a time bomb by itself, I don't know what measures you have in place uh, to ensure that, you know, all these persons as well will have the benefits and the advice needed so that they have, you know, safe retirement. Absolutely. Um, you know, Kenya has been lucky that um, our population has been very young and mm -hmm. we have not had um, what we call a high dependency ratio, where yeah. we have many people who are retired um, who are being sort of financed by the younger uh, group. Yeah. In our case, we have had a young uh, population. So yeah. That is changing. As we go forward, we are mm -hmm. going to have more and more um, older people. Yeah. And um, the dependence ratio is going to, uh, going to increase. So really, um, the key is to take action now. You know, we don't wait until that time <laughs> and then start saying, now what do we, yeah. how do we handle all these numbers and so on. Mm -hmm. And the action that uh, we need to take mm -hmm. is for those who are working today who are still young yeah. to be saving for their retirement. Okay. So that when they reach retirement, mm -hmm. um, they will um, 
have this pot of money that will keep them in, um, in, in retirement. Yeah. You know, traditionally, uh, people would say that um, when they retire, they will uh, get their children to come and take care of them and, you know, those kind of things. Uh, yeah. Those, uh, structures. <laughs> yeah. But those have broken down. They uh, call it, they are, call it I think, outside there, the black tax. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, but those have broken down. Uh, chances are when you retire, uh, mm -hmm. your children may not even be in the country. They may have migrated to other countries <laughs> or they could be doing other things and so yeah. on. Uh, or you may even have to take care of them. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we have seen those cases where people are taking care of their children as well in their yeah. time. Um, so really the, the, the key is um, for you to, to start saving at a young age. When you start saving, when you're still young, yeah. you don't have to save much. You yeah. just save a small amount. Mm -hmm. um, it goes into the pension scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of the power of compounding, you yeah. know, it is invested and the, it earns income. And the income is also invested and it earns income. And that income earns income. Yeah. Um, when you reach retirement, mm -hmm. what you get, what you have saved is not much, but mm -hmm. what you have gotten in terms of investment income is huge. Yeah. And that is what gives you a comfortable life. So with that demographic pressure coming, yeah. I think uh, the, the, uh, the challenge is to Kenyans that you really need to start saving for, um, for your retirement. Yes, Certainly. government can give basic, the government may give basic social security, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, through, for example, the Inua Jamii program, which is yeah. there, which gives uh, some money to people over 70. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is really just money to avoid um, people being in absolute poverty. Okay. It's not money that you can use as income replacement um, when, when you're retired. Absolutely. And you know, as I said again, the key, the key time bomb here would be that there will be less saved uh, because of, of course, the, those demographic changes and, you know, much more used at the family level and even nationally. And so you have proposed that the Kenya Institute of Universal Pension Coverage for Citizens should deal with this issue. How can this be actualized? Um, universal coverage is, 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 is important um, in, in, in pensions. Yes. And, um, you know, the challenge we have in Kenya is that we have a voluntary system of, of saving for retirement. Mm -hmm. So people voluntarily save. Mm -hmm. uh, themselves because we have products that can allow you to save whether you're in the informal sector or the formal sector yeah you can save through uh, the products that we have yeah. or um, they save through employer created schemes mm -hmm. so the employer starts a scheme and then the people are saving and the employer is also contributing yeah uh, but again even for the employer it is voluntary mm -hmm. so not all employers yes have schemes in fact many employers don't have patient schemes for their workers at all mm -hmm. Um, so I think the solution is we need to go to a more compulsory yeah. um, um, system mm -hmm. um, where everybody is required to save for, yes. um, for retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps as an intermediate step, we could go for what they have done in some countries, which is what they call an opt-in system okay. or opt-out system. Mm -hmm. So they put everybody into a scheme, mm -hmm. and if somebody feels so strongly that they don't <laughs> want to save, then they can opt out. They can opt uh, out. But okay. at least um, you know, most people end up just uh, staying in because they realize the value of, of, of saving. Y you know, from where I sit and from what you're saying as well, it's very important that people really think through their retirement. And so what is the hindrance from where you see it? Why are Kenyans not running in to safeguard their future? Um, there are a number of issues. Um, one, um, uh, generally, um, as not just Kenyans, as, as humans, <laughs> um, we suffer from what we call myopia. So okay. we tend to think, uh, you know, yes. short term. We don't really want to think about very far ahead. Uh -huh. Um, when we are young, we imagine we'll be young forever. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, when you talk to some people when they're young, they say, you know, I still have plenty of time. I'm going to start saving when I get older. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, you know, the earlier you start, the less you're going to, uh, mm -hmm. you're going to have to save. Mm -hmm. um, so um, there's that short-term thinking. Mm -hmm. I think also um, uh, traditionally the pension products we have mm -hmm. were not, um, you know, in harmony with the labor market we have. Because okay. our labor market is mainly in the informal sector. Mm -hmm. uh, but the traditional pension scheme was in the formal sector. Okay. Um, so now is when we have come up with these new products mm -hmm. which um, target the informal sector. All right. Uh, they use the, the mobile phones. You okay. know, they don't need to have bank accounts. They mm -hmm. don't need to have payrolls and those, yeah. ki those kind of structures. Yeah. So it's very easy now for anybody to save for, for, for return. Great. So I think the challenge will be just getting the word out and okay. uh, doing the education so okay. people can know that these products are there. And then they save. And of course, these products are tax advantaged. Yeah. When, when you save for for retirement through a pension scheme, mm -hmm. it is a tax advantaged way of saving as opposed to any other form of saving that uh, you may do. Okay. So we come to the tail end of the interview and um, I would like you to enlighten the viewers. You know, somebody is seated there saying, okay, I hear you, they run a business, maybe they're not in a formal employment 
and they're thinking, maybe I need to start thinking about this. What would you tell them? Because somebody there is thinking, I've not even started anything, and they're in their 40s, hitting 50s there. What would you tell them? Um, it's never too late, of course. Uh, yes. <laughs> even if you're in your 40s or 50s, you can yeah. still uh, start saving for, for retirement. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have the products. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have a lot of channels that we have, we have a toll-free line. You can call us. We mm -hmm. can advise you. Mm -hmm. um, we have our website, which has uh, a lot of information. Also links to the pension schemes that you, yeah. can, uh, that you can join. Mm -hmm. um, so what you do is you, if you're you know, in a business and you don't have a scheme for the employer, like yeah. you know, in big, big, big companies, mm -hmm. you join what we call an individual personal pension plan. Yeah. So individual personal pension is open to anybody to join. Mm -hmm. If you are a mama boga, mm -hmm. you can join it. If you are a border border rider, you can join it. If you are a taxi driver, Uber or whatever, you can join um, uh, an individual pension plan. Absolutely. And then you'll be putting uh, something um, in there. And it doesn't have to be on a monthly basis. It can be when and if income mm -hmm. comes. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's very flexible. Absolutely. Uh, and then, um, you know, uh, it will be invested, it will continue to grow. And then when you're older, you can come back and get that money out and it will help you in your retirement. Okay. Mm. I wouldn't want to end this interview without asking you to help us because some people may be pointed out to, let me call them Ponzi or fake, you know, uh, pe uh, people who want to just stick up their schemes. And we have had some people cry for about such kind of things. Is there a way they can verify through you that this is, uh, this is a valid uh, places where you can invest your money? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, even on our website, we have the list of all the regulated individual pension plans. There yes. are around 35 that we have registered. Okay. Um, we have the list of the fund managers, the custodians, mm -hmm. we have all we have registered. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, as financial sector regulators, we cannot overemphasize um, the message. Mm -hmm. Please use financial products which mm -hmm. are regulated. Yes. Uh, once you go... Uh, uh, you know, putting your money in unregulated products, you don't have any protections. Absolutely. But when you use regulated products, mm -hmm. you are protected. Uh, you have the regulators in place to make sure that your money is safe. Absolutely. So the final question will be about some of the innovations that you have in the pipeline. I know there are a few of them. Could you enlighten us on that? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have moved away from sort of the traditional pension product uh, yeah. to bring up about some really exciting um, innovations in, in our pension industry. Mm -hmm. So one of them is what we call the post-retirement medical fund. Yeah. Um, what we realized from our research and our interaction with people who have retired mm -hmm. is that medical expense is a big challenge for elderly persons in this country. <coughs> So what we have done is within the pension scheme, mm -hmm. as you save for your pension, you can also put something else on the side, mm -hmm. which is specifically to cater for your medical in retirement. Yes. So you have this fund called the post-retirement medical fund. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you accumulate money there, and then when you reach retirement age, that money is specifically used to buy um, medical for you Absolutely. for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a challenge to get medical cover when you're old. Mm -hmm. So it's a great product, it's there, yeah, it's also enjoying the tax advantages that um, we have. It's a regulated product, so mm -hmm. at least you know you will get your money, you know, those years uh, mm -hmm. down, uh, down the line. Yeah. And you know your medical in retirement would be, would be catered for. Okay. Uh, the second <coughs> exciting innovation, which is uh, also quite recent, mm -hmm. is with regard to housing. Yeah. Uh, we also realized that sometimes people were retiring and they didn't have a, a house of their own, that they mm -hmm. own. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, it can be a bit... Um, Awkward when you are uh, looking you have nowhere to go and so on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yes. um, so um, we, we we have a new uh, a new product uh, mm -hmm. which allows you um, even before retirement age okay. um, to use uh, part of what you have saved in the pension scheme mm -hmm. to buy a house. Wow! Actually, you can use up to forty percent of what you have saved. Mm. Um, and you know, with the affordable housing program that we are seeing government and private sector doing, mm -hmm. uh, we now have supply of houses at you know at good price. Mm -hmm. Um, so members of pension schemes yeah. can get some of their money, even at a young age, even at 40 or, you know, <laughs> 50, uh, get that money and buy a house. Yes. So by the time they retire, uh, mm -hmm. at least housing is not going to be a concern. Okay. So I think if we will have catered for housing and medical of our retirees, then yeah. our, our retirees are going to have very good, um, very good life in retirement. Wow. <coughs> Lovely. By the way, quick question. At what age should one start saving for their retirement? That's a quick shot. <laughs> start saving as soon as you start working. <laughs> As soon as you start working. As soon as you start working. <laughs> Don't delay. <laughs> because the earlier you start, the less yeah. you'll be saving a very small amount. Yeah. Uh, if the later you start, then the more you have to save in order to accumulate enough. Absolutely. But when you start young, you save very little, but it will be more than enough when you reach return. 
Wow. Start where you are right away. Uh, that's Mr. Nzoma Muchuko, the CEO of RBA, right here on the Trady Bell Show. Telling us about what RBA is doing and some of the initiatives they have and the innovations they have in the pipeline. Lovely way to really end the conversation. Right now, we leave you with the markets.